of the main um, <laughs> problems I find is that all our, our learners come to our classes mainly to develop their speaking skills and become better um, communicators using the language. And what happens is we tend to focus a little bit more on other aspects of language development. So we have loads on grammar, on vocabulary, on writing, and we tend to focus a lot on assigning homework tasks that really help them develop those skills or those systems of the language. Um, so, yeah, I think I can, I can live with that. I'm fine. <laughs> there. Okay. So, uh -uh. It, um, <clears throat> go, go back. <laughs> That's fine. So, um, we have that, we have uh, the need that comes to our classroom really focuses on the communicative aspect of the language, and in particular the oral communication, but what happens is that we don't really cater for that, because it's quite difficult to think about, it's quite difficult to say to learners, go home and do this activity for speaking, because sometimes we think, you know, how are we going to assess that, how are we going to help them develop that, we're not there. Um, we know that the only way to improve our speaking skills is by noticing active noticing, which means um, that the person speaking at the same time as performing the act of speaking develops that ability to notice what's getting out of their mouths and whether it's accurate, whether it's appropriate and whether it's fluent and how effectively that message comes across. And we, we as teachers need to help our learners develop that skill first before we focus so much on, you know, be more fluent, do this task, speak better, try this again and again. And I believe that by giving them some extra activities to do at home, which focus on speaking, we can help them become better monitors of their own linguistic performance and their own linguistic output. <coughs> So that's not a new idea, and it's not my idea. Um, it, the first time um, somebody talked about it was in 2001, when the idea of speaking homework was out there. And, and the most important thing is that it helps learners use the language that they would not use. I mean, you might have... Here is a, is a different case, obviously, because it's an English-speaking country, so when they leave the room, they will have to speak English, but most of our learners usually socialise with people of their own nationalities and their own, their own um, mother tongue. So when they leave our room, they start speaking whatever language they, they speak. So there are opportunities they get for speaking practice outside of the classroom are minimised. Now, why um, speaking homework? Well... There is low stress because the teacher is not present. Low stakes because you have nothing to lose. Your, your colleagues in the room, your, your other, your co kind of students will not kind of judge you if, if you're afraid of that. It's a great opportunity because it allows non native speakers to speak to non native speakers. And that's very important if you come from another country and you find yourself in Dublin, in Ireland, where everybody says, oh, no, English, and, and, and you don't know what to do. And it can get really stressful, but at times it's helpful when you speak to somebody from another nationality, perhaps, that you don't share the same L1, but it does allow you to use English to communicate with them. The other very important aspect is that out-of-class setting, um, which I find very important anyway with whatever it is that we do as language teachers, but the most important thing of all is that we break away from that artificial environment that a classroom has. Because you walk into that door and usually there is a sign that says, you know, English only. Um, and we, we talk about specific subjects and we give them tasks that resemble as much as possible real life scenario, but they're all controlled by the teacher. So it's not very, very helpful for them, but if you make them and give them opportunities to use their language outside the classroom, it's a little bit more authentic for them, and a little bit more meaningful as well, because they can see the relationship between 
what they're doing and what the real out, outcome for them will be. So some um, of the ideas that I have here and that I've tried with my learners are these eight and I'll, I'd like to talk about them um, one by one. So the first thing uh, that um, whoever knows me is uh, I hate course books. I find them dull and not interesting. And at times I think it's great to have my learners, especially if they're young learners um, or teenagers, to act out those dialogues from course books um, when they're at home. That's, a, that's an activity that I would um, not encourage to do in class. I, I hate reading aloud. I don't see the point of it. Um, when you're in class, because that's valuable time that learners pay. But when they're at home, they can practice doing that. They can actually go and record themselves acting out those dialogues, focusing on pronunciation, focusing on making those associations between letters and sound, focusing on making the dialogues a little bit more interesting, because especially if you have people of higher ability, pre-intermediates and above, they can change the dialogues, they can make them a little bit more interesting. You can give them a task where you say, take this and make it better, or make it relevant to you, or how would you say, to whom would you say, to change the characters, give them life. Um, if, if there is anybody here working with young learners, you will know how important it is that the content you have is relatable to them, that they can actually identify with the characters of a course book or a short story, and that's something we can do at home. Prediction tasks. Most of you have gone through training. You would know um, there would be somebody in your training like me saying you need to you need to make them predict, because that would help them anticipate what's coming, which would activate those neurons in the brain that would help them get the gist of the text better. But that's something that you don't really need to do in class. Learners can do all the predictions at home. They can actually receive the title of the text. They can receive the pictures that come with the text. And you can give them a particular task saying, go through that, these four titles, think about what, do you, you know, what this is all about. And they can have an oral, um, if you like, response to the task that you receive. And when you start your lesson, next day you can start with their um, output which in this case will become the class's input for listening where they will all listen to their voices talking about whatever the text is all about and then you can present them with the text and this will save a little bit of time of class time for you to do more meaningful activities more comprehension tasks um, if you are preparing learners for exams, you would know that most of the higher level exams require learners to summarise information and present it. Um, IELTS, CAE, CP, they all need to make sense of a particular prompt. And this is a great opportunity for learners to practice at home. You can give them a list of bullet points. Um, they can see them and then they can summarise them orally. The same can happen with texts, with pictures, with a story, with something they watched, with whatever they liked. And they can start focusing on oral summaries, which is something we sometimes neglect to focus on, because we tend to think of summary as a written genre only. Um, Storytelling is again great for teenagers, it's great for young learners, it's great for adults and the, the best I have found that works for mature students that sometimes come to refresh their English. Again you can have storytelling activities that they can do at home. Reporter for a Day is by far my favourite, uh, where you send your students to do or go out on the street and ask people about something and interview somebody that goes uh, well with number seven. Um, if they are in their home country, they can interview their parents or somebody from their family. But if they're here, it's very easy. Just go to the supermarket and ask somebody for something and record that. Um, and the last activity I did, an oral learning diary to help to promote a little bit of learner autonomy, wherever Friday they need to go home and um, record themselves talking about the week where they say, this is what I learned, this is what I liked, this is what I didn't really like, please don't do it again. 
which is very helpful for me, but it's also very helpful for them. Now, um, the way I do it is I use VoiceThread. That's a non it's a website, it's also an app, it's free, you don't need to pay. The only thing that you do need to do is you need to register. If you have though younger learners, minors or anybody with issues of consent when it comes to online data protection, you can use vocaroo.com, V-O-C-A-R-O-O, Com, which does not have any sort of registration, sign up, sign in. You just record your voice and send it to the teacher's email. The same thing you can do with your phone if you are in a high tech environment. But the beauty of VoiceThread is that it creates threads. So if you have a class and you have a prediction task, say, rather than seeing this here, you can see the title of a text or two or three pictures. And you can, if I'm the student, I go to the link that my teacher sent me, I, there's an add button there, I click on that add button, and I add my comment orally. My comment does not go live until I, I ask it to go live. So I can listen to it, I can see if I like what I said, if it was accurate or not, I can pause, I can redo it again, which is great because it gives rehearsal time, which is very important for speaking development. And then when I'm happy with my final outcome, I can press, I can press publish, and all the other um, <coughs> students in the class will listen to me, and they will respond to me orally, and all that stays there and the teacher can control. So it also promotes self-correction, peer correction, and it gives you loads of material to use as input on subsequent lessons for some feedback and error correction.